Do you know what? As an absolute serial DIYer, this feels like a naughty treat. Paying someone to come and do something. Because, I mean... Oh. Might be able to hear in the background. A bit of knocking. Fencing day. So Tom's trying to get all of these strainers and the kind of posts where the, the, there's a change in pitch or a change in direction of the fence in first and they're just flying in. I mean, I, obviously our ground helps because it's pretty soft over here, but I mean the weight of that thing, it just drives them in so easily. To be honest, I can't remember which ones I bought. I think there were six to sevens and then seven to eight. So that looks like a six to seven, I guess. An awful lot of rubbish over here that was slowly picking through most of which ends up snagging in the mower at a motocross tire last night. How heavy is the weight? you work out what we're going to do here? Yeah, try and get it back a bit further in if we can. Yeah. This last bit here is going to have rails across to the same work because there's not really any way we can tension wire all the way to there. So this will become our last post and then from here on it will just be rails with a bit of wire. Solid. Definitely goes to show you that if you've got the right kit, or the big enough kit, makes the job a lot quicker and a lot easier because I'm pretty sure I'd be on my first or second post still. That's all of the strain that's done, about an hour. I'm glad they were able to work around this hornbeam tree because it's quite a nice shade. And I think if we do have livestock in the whole meadow, we want to keep some of that because most of it is open along here. Oh, we've got visitors on the farm today, so we're kind of jumping between filming a bit down here, but I'll try and keep you in the loop with everything that's going on. The guys have been down here. I think they're probably going to put out the bottom wire. 
which is where you set your pace off. We're gonna miss. No catastrophes. <laughs> Through that line. Cool. It's yeah, yeah. It's probably that far away from your trees, roughly. Yeah. Where that's running a straight line. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. There's plenty of room. Cool. Yeah. And then yeah. you'll and then so you set that out basically you use it like a string line, do you? Yeah. And then, and then, then just, you then just put leave your it there. in. Put, yeah. a, put a post in there now then. Yeah. That was nearly two hundred meters to so, it. Yeah, nearly a whole roll. So I said we'll just cut that off now, start the next roll. Yeah. But I've been skiving, doing all sorts of jobs. I'm going back over to check because we loaded up a pack of uh, regular posts and they brought them over. So it's going to see, I think it made a start on them already. Are they just plonked in, are they? Yeah, just, yeah. Sat, just so I'm going to keep bending down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's four foot level, so. Yeah, far off. Maybe somewhere near that. Let's get this. This is progress, isn't it? So these are all just plopped in for now. Hence what they look like. We're fencing in deer. Hey, that's an idea. A little deer park. So they'll all end up that high, which is what twelve hundred, I think. I mean, we've lost. We've definitely lost a bit of our boundary, bearing in mind we were at that oak tree. But like I was saying. In the last video, I really want to be able to maintain both sides of this. We'll reseed it all with grass. And then that should suppress a little bit with the nettles coming back. And we've widened this section. Should be much easier to get through. I'm definitely going to come down and grade this out. I think I might bring the gnaw car down because you can use the float on that to get it a bit more accurate. Definitely some progress going on. Hey, get off my land! If you, can you see through? All these posts are up all the way along. So instead of a plain wire, I've asked for a barbed along the bottom. In reality, over time, that will probably disappear a little bit. It'll be sat up off ground level now. It's not that nice barbed wire. Hence why we're kind of losing a barbed wire top. We're just going to go with a plain wire on top and electrify it. But barbed wire down the bottom just makes sure that if we do have the pigs loose in here, that they, there's no chance that they can get under. Or not under, but root up. I don't believe it, they've done the whole run. Well, they haven't done them, but they've they've uh, put them in soft. Do you know what, as an absolute serial DIYer, this feels like a naughty treat, paying someone to come and do something. Because, I mean, oh. All the way down there. All the way back. It's, uh, I haven't done it with a wheel yet, but I think when I mapped it out on Tornado, which is the fencing manufacturer's website, you can, you can plot your fence on the map and it gives you a metre guide, which is pretty accurate. I think we're about 420 odd metres, so it's a fair old uh, length. I don't know how much they're going to get done today, but it looks to me like they're going to get all the posts in. I'm not here tomorrow, so I'm just hoping that we still get to see some of the, the actual netting going in. All right, that's enough getting excited. Let's go and see the action. It's straightened out quite a lot now, isn't it? Yeah, we had to put a couple more big posts in just to get the line out yeah. of the hedgerow. But no, we might have to put, make some odd strainers here and there. Yeah. Depends if we can get the wire. So it doesn't damage the top of the post much at all, does it? With that plate on it? Three little, I don't know if you've seen under there. Oh, little spikes? Three little spikes. It just holds it, it just in. Just grips the post. Yeah, yeah. On top of each post. But it doesn't mushroom it out no. like you would have if you were no, driving it in by hand. do it with a hammer, yeah. So 
So do you have to put an angle on the end strainers at all when you do box strainer or not? No, it's just straight. It's literally just straight across. Yeah. And you go like to the top of the sheet net. Yeah. Thereabouts. So eight, eight hundred mil off the road. Yeah, yeah. Thereabouts. Yeah. So you're near the top of the boat. So you can see here we've got a slight turn. That's why it's a wider post than the rest of it. One of the good things is we are, I think, 10 short of a pack. We bought two packs because I knew the price was only going to go up. So we've probably got enough to do all of this and the top hill field, um, which is awesome because, you know, posts weren't cheap, but every three meters. High tensile wire can go even further than that, but I think it's probably right. This is where the first box drain is going to go in. Box drain is where you have a horizontal across here and then you have a diagonal high tensile wire to hold it in like a frame rather than put in a diagonal. I was just asking Tom about that because often you see the brace coming down on 45 degrees and then it's got a post that it's anchored into at the bottom. We're pretty soft the soil over here plus it gets pretty wet there's a chance that that bottom bit would rot off sooner than it would if we in this configuration i think it was a kiwi invention coming up with this configuration where you have big strainer slightly smaller post there and then it, you kind of it's more a physics thing than uh, anything by having the wire is it top to bottom or bottom to top i can't remember we'll have to wait and see and then that way you, there's no chance you're either going to tip over the post or pull the whole thing out Maybe we'll ask Tom a bit more about that when he gets to it. Definitely a good option to not be greedy and go as far in as we can. I think coming out a bit made sense. All these branches would just end up landing on it. And remember, because we're putting an electric top strand on, that way we want to make sure that it's clear of any foliage and debris. If, if these branches start growing on it or touching, it's going to be shorting out where we don't want it. Oh, so these must be the little pegs on the post knocker that grip onto it. I just check with Tom to see what he's going to be doing tomorrow, which is why I'm not here. And I don't want you guys to miss out. So tomorrow he's going to move on to working on the box trainers, which I was describing earlier. And he said he might leave one, because he might do one in the middle. He might leave one till Saturday so I can film that. But I did say to him, don't slow down on behalf of just a video. So um, he's going to crack on. I don't think, therefore, that we're going to miss too much. We've obviously seen the, the meaty stuff today getting all the posts in like half a day 450 440 meters something like that insane but by the sounds of it he was intending to come back saturday solo to to strain it all or get all the wire rolled out so because i'm here on my own on saturday make makes sense i can work alongside him learn a bit film a bit and share a bit with you guys so we've got four rolls should do it i bought 12 rolls of 100 meters in an auction so we've got plenty to do the rest of 
the fields over the next few months and years. But we should, yeah, we should have enough to do to just bring down four rolls. And then any of these hollows down here from where I didn't quite get around to this morning, I can come in and fill those. So we'll work off, he's going to work off the barbed wire, you know, that bottom line, which is nice and flat. And then I will fill in below it because I think that makes sense rather than him trying to follow down into those dips and then us back up and end up with soil and contact with the wire. We really want everything off the ground. That way I'm hoping we've opened it up enough here that we can reseed from the grass up there through this area and tie into up here. And the fact that we lost three or four big trees over the winter means it's actually a bit lighter here. I imagine this was probably quite a shady spot. So this little mini series will probably end up being three parts, I imagine. Posts have all gone in today. I think we've, I think I'm done for today. They're just gonna finish off the last few posts. Then they'll leave the tractor here and finish off anything tomorrow. In the next video, I will do a full breakdown of costs. Then after that, I've got to come in and strain and fit in our top wire, which is gonna be a high tensile electric wire. That will be in little insulator clips on the posts. And there'll be another video on that. So hopefully then, by the end of those three videos, we'll have a nice permanent physical stock fence that is, well, stock proof in itself, but also is gonna have the permanent electric feed on it so that I can just divide up this paddock uh, or this meadow as into paddocks and we can strip graze it or we can strip root it with the pigs, uh, whatever we want really. I think just bringing the electric down here just gives a bit more versatility to it. And it's a bit nicer than having barbed wire everywhere. Just like tractors, just like chainsaws, just like anything to do with DIY. No doubt the comments will be flooding in on, oh, you don't want to do it like this. I pre-warned Tom. I'm still learning. And people have a way of doing things. And if it's well thought out, and they've got reasoning behind it, then I will work with them on that. But so far, I'm really impressed. It's just coming on really nice. And this definitely feels like it's going to be a long-lasting job, providing I keep and maintain this uh, boundary and all the vegetation that's bound to start growing through it over the next few years. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time. Don't do it yourself. Get a fencing contract with a 300 kilogram weight on the back. It's way easier. I would be on about post six by now. Douche. Ow. Douche. Oh. You know what it's like.